Well, let's bring in Dr. Alan Mendoza, Executive Director of the Henry Jackson Society. A very good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. So what are you expecting the government to say in about an hour's time? What, what, what do you hope uh, Oliver Dowden has to say when he speaks to the dispatch box? Well, I hope to listen to those uh, parliamentarians who have been um, brutally harassed in this way and will take um, appropriate action to label China the threat it is. I, I somewhat suspect he might not, though. I think uh, the government's stance is we've done enough so far. But clearly, in Duncan Smith and others in the press conference, highlighted areas we could go further in terms of uh, sanctions and other matters. And I think I would be surprised if there weren't sanctions uh, for this uh, egregious breach here today. Sir, so didn't go into detail of what um, he'd been told in a private briefing about uh, being targeted by China. But what sort of things would you imagine it would be? Well, he's mentioned something of it. For example, he, he did say that there was, you know, a wolf warrior, one of China's uh, diplomats, impersonating him for some time, emailing politicians around the world, etc., that kind of thing. So, you know, we, we hear a little bit about it. I, I would imagine it's that kind of harassment. It's um, frustrating meetings he's trying to have or uh, discussions he's had. I'll tell you this, not linked to that. We at the Henry Jackson Society had a state uh, hack from China when they were trying to work out the communication between a Chinese defector and one of our staff. They wanted just to see what was being said. That's the kind of thing I would expect to have been seen in this case as well. And how do you cope with that? Well, what you've got to do is make sure your systems are as um, up-to-date as possible. The reality is if a country like China wants to try and hack you, they will perhaps succeed ultimately because they're quite good at this. But what this tells us is that on the state level, we have to impose um, punishments for them doing so. Currently, we're telling China, yes, you're a threat, but we're doing nothing about that. And there's been a dangerous complacency, I think, in the UK political scene, despite everyone really deep down knowing what China's all about here and what it's trying to do here. Uh, we thought, oh, if, if we just go quiet, we can keep on trading with them and it'll be fine. Well, it won't be fine. This, again, shows it won't be fine. And until we take the threat seriously, we are potentially encouraging further attacks of this kind. Is democracy at risk as a uh, Chinese official being blamed for the hacking of British voters details, the attack in 2022, seeing 40 million people's personal data accessed? Well, yes, it could be. I mean, the reality is that we, of course, do have an election coming up uh, fairly soon. We're worried about um, data breaches. We're worried about the ability of foreign countries to perhaps interfere in the process, whether that is by direct hacking to discover, uh, you know, voters' details and doing something with that, or, of course, the dangers that AI now uh, present in terms of deep fakes and other um, propaganda that can be pushed out. So there's a very real threat to democracy, which is why, in an election year particularly, the government have to get a handle on this and make it quite clear to China that we will not tolerate this kind of behaviour and there will be consequences. And there are concerns that hostile states have been spreading online conspiracy theories about the Princess of Wales. Um, why would they be interested in that? Well, it's a good way to destabilise a country. So um, if you start spreading rumours and you start spreading lies about what's going on, you start getting people in your target country asking questions. Well, what is happening? What is going on? Why is there secrecy? All of this. And it's a great way just to sow dissent and to increase social discord within a country. It's also, by the way, of course, why, you know, um, the Americans have recently labelled TikTok such a threat. They regard Chinese ownership of TikTok as being particularly detrimental to societal harmony because they believe there's a back door to the Chinese government that enables the government to essentially control the algorithm and cause further dissension within the West. China says uh, they're not doing it. They've described the reports as false. Well, they would say that, wouldn't they, to coin the famous phrase. Um, but I think there's enough evidence for the fact that we're going to see a government statement on the subject. There's been a two-year investigation. It's quite clear that China was responsible. It's quite clear that China uh, is trying to hack politicians and those involved in politics in that way. They're not just doing it here. They're doing it across the board, which reminds us this is not just a battle that the UK is facing. And arguably what we should be doing is collectively taking on China about this rather than going on individually. There should be a compact between those countries where democracy is under threat because of Chinese um, sort of uh, attempts to uh, interfere with it and we should be going collectively to respond to China in that way. And during that um, press conference we heard uh, one of the Tory MPs, I think it was Tim Loughton who said it, that um, there wouldn't be a risk to trade if we did sort of crack down, became harsher with China and our relationship and, and, and we stood up to them when they are uh, carrying out these attacks. Well, yes, I think the reality is that 
if we did it collectively and we brought together a group of countries, there wouldn't be a risk to trade. I think there's always been a danger um, on facing off China on, it, on your own because they then try and punish you. That's part of the bully boy tactics they operate. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it because it's the right thing to do. We can't, we can't be staring down the barrel of a gun, worried about you know, a trade digit here or there uh, because China's interfering. We have to stand up to them, but it's better to stand up together collectively and present a united front of Western democracies and other democracies, for that matter. It's not just the West. Uh, who are under threat in this way, and that gives you a much better chance of forcing China to accept it cannot behave as it wants to in this area.